Okay, so uh, <clears throat> let's get started. Uh, first of all, um, a gentle reminder on uh, quiz tomorrow. Okay, so come prepared. Uh, so uh, uh, this week we'll sort of conclude uh, linear algebra. But before that, let's look at a few. Uh, let's do a quick recap on what we did in the last class. So uh, we started by looking at uh, different ways of uh, defining inner product in a finite dimensional space, right? So uh, V transpose U is not the only way by which you can, uh, or V Hermitian U is not the only way by which you can define inner product, right? There are other ways. So one way was basically you look at U Hermitian Q V, where Q is a positive definite matrix. Then this also uh, mimics the inner product. Therefore, this is a new inner product. So the moment you keep on changing Q, uh, you'll get different uh, class of uh, inner products. And this induces a class of norms also, right? Uh, and then we saw what we mean by a unit ball or an epsilon ball with respect to a norm, right? For example, if you look at two norm, the uh, epsilon ball would be basically all points uh, at a radius R from the origin, right? That's very clear. Uh, but if you use a different norm, instead of two norm, let's say you use a Q norm, uh, it turns out that the ball is not really uh, physically the ball, but uh, it will be an ellipsoid, right? In two dimension, it's an ellipse, right? Um, yeah, so uh, uh, later on, uh, we um, looked at a few other things. For example, uh, how do you find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? Um, we came up with an algorithm. So what is the algorithm? You randomly pick a U, you take A U, normalize it, you get U1. Uh, a, you take A U1, normalize it, you get U2. A U2, normalize it, keep on doing that, right? It will converge, right? Uh, so the uh, U, U1, U2, U3, the sequence will converge to the uh, some vector. So that vector is called, it will be an eigenvector corresponding to the maximum eigenvalue. So what do you do after that? You randomly pick an uh, pick a vector orthogonal to that. Keep doing that, right? Each time when you uh, update, for example, a u2, when you update a, let's say u1 dash, u2 dash, and so on, uh, you you should you should not forget uh, to project it onto orthogonal subspace of u1 or the uh, eigenvector corresponding to the maximum eigenvalue, right? So then we started looking at uh, um, the operator norms, right? So what do you mean by an operator norm? Uh, of course, uh, if, you, if you are given an operator, for example, a matrix, I don't know how to define the norm of that. Of course, I know one way is Frobenius norm, right? We saw that. Um, the other way is you convert that matrix into a vector, right? How do you do that? Well, you can stack one below the other. That gives me and take the norm. That gives me the Frobenius norm or you operate it you take x and operate, uh, you take a and operate x, you get ax, which is a vector, look at the norm of that and normalize by x. Because if you don't normalize, what will happen? If I pick uh, a vector x whose length is really, really large, then the norm will also be typically large. Right? And we uh, verified the fact that this is indeed a norm. This is called, what, what norm is called? It's called operator norm. Okay, there are other names to it. It's also called soup norm okay uh, these are uh, there are a couple of names for this okay then uh, we looked at the eigenvalue decomposition uh, and i think that's where uh, we kind of uh, stopped okay so let's look at uh, okay uh, Okay, so uh, okay, so uh, today we will uh, uh, continue with that and sort of uh, try to conclude. If not today, maybe uh, uh, in on Thursday we will sort of uh, conclude on linear algebra and move on to uh, uh, optimization. Okay, so um, in today's class we will look at a few uh, other things. So it's kind of a sort of a random walk that we will do. Uh, to cover a few things. 
okay so the first thing that we are going to look at is um, uh, how do you project a vector onto a subspace right so how do you project for example you have a vector here let's say v and i want to project it onto this let's say a vector uh, on a subspace one dimensional subspace u right so what do you do what is the projection what is the projection so how do you project so u is a vector right let's say n cross 1 and uh, u is uh, v is also another vector n cross 1 so i want to project v onto u we saw the projection right so this is how you do it right uh, so let me just write one uh, thing so you take a vector okay so let x be in rn okay so it's a vector in rn okay and x perp is orthogonal to x okay so what do you mean by that if you take x transpose x perp you will get zero right um, you will take a perpendicular vector right so what can you say about this so suppose i take ai minus so remember x perp is a column vector x perp transpose so what can you say about uh, this matrix see this is an n cross n matrix right x perp is n cross 1 transpose is 1 cross n so you get an n cross 1 n cross n matrix which is rank 1 matrix i uh, take identity matrix and subtract this rank 1 matrix so what can you say about uh, this kind of a matrix and also what can you say about uh, this matrix let's see there is some use to this right what can you say let's look at this right so suppose i take x so i'll do one thing okay so i'll take i minus x perp x perp transpose and multiply by x what do i get hmm? what is x perp transpose x zero right it's inner product of orthogonal vectors so the second term will be zero what will be the first term x itself that means if you project so if you look at this matrix you take this matrix multiply by x you get the vector itself right that's a nice property to have right uh, let's look at another property so what is uh, okay, maybe i'll write it as one what is the other property so suppose i take this and i multiply by x perp what do you get well uh, let's also add a condition here okay so let's assume that this x perp has unit length length of this x perp is u. i can always do that right i can take the perpendicular and normalize it what can you say about this what is x perp transpose x perp it's the norm of x perp square what is norm of x perp square it is 1 right so now what do you get here it's x perp minus x perp transpose x perp is 1 you will get x perp itself which is 0 so what does that mean you take the matrix multiply by x perpendicular you will get 0 right but if you multiply by x you get x itself so what can you uh, so let's say let's look at let me write these observations right so observations So what is the first observation? Um, basically, I'll call this matrix as P, okay? So I'll call this matrix as P, okay? So what is this P matrix doing? P times X perp is X perp itself, right? Is that correct? No, it's X perp, X perp is zero, right? Uh, okay, just a small, sorry for the confusion. So let me use this as X, okay, PX. Uh, okay, let me call this as Px. So Px x perp is 0. Px x is x itself. Right? Looking at this, what, what can you say? You can think of this Px as projection, right? If the vector itself is already in the span of x, and you say, I want to take that vector and project it onto the subspace. 
it's like this I, i take a vector and i ask you to project it onto this plane what do you get you get some projection but if the vector is already in the plane what do you get if i say project it onto this uh, plane you get the same vector right if i ask this vector uh, if i if i give you this vector on this uh, two dimensional plane and ask you to project it onto something orthogonal what do you get zero right so this mimics a projection by the way this projects onto a vector space spanned by a vector x suppose i want to span let's say uh, a two dimensional vect vector space suppose you have x1 and this is x2 i want to project it onto the subspace spanned by this x1 x2 what is the span of x1 x2 all possible right so how do you do this what is it that you will do how do you construct a projection so one thing is you know um, <clears throat> i can project it onto x2 right so what do i do i normalize x2 to get x2 dash i can project it onto x2 easily i know how to do that uh if i want to project it onto x1 uh, you know uh, i want it to be a unit vector one thing that i can do is since it spans the entire space i can just take let's say x1 dash x1 dash x2 dash are orthogonal to each other it spans the entire this it spans the vector space spanned by x1 x2 and they have unit norm right i can do the following right so i can do x1 dash x1 dash transpose minus x2 dash x2 dash transpose right uh let me call this as p x1 x2 okay because uh, so i want you to think about uh, what this this gives us okay by the way uh, i want to look at the perpendicular of this right so uh, what i will do is i'll take uh, okay so let me not call this as uh, let me call this as some q okay q x1 x2 check what uh, check the properties of this of this okay that is the first thing the second thing that you are going to do is um, i want to project it onto span of uh, x1 x2 so construct such a matrix okay so construct p x1 x2 projection matrix onto span of x1 x2 okay so in general Uh, if you have a matrix for example uh, let me call this as pv let if pv is supposed to be a projection matrix right so if p v is a projection matrix onto a subspace v which is a, suppose let's say subset of rn then what are the properties that we need pv should uh, pvv should be equal to v for all v in v right if you take a vector v in v and ask you ask you to project onto v itself uh, you should get the same vector right you take a vector on the plane and ask you to project onto the plane then you should get the same vector right so pv of v per okay so it should be equal to zero for all v perp belonging to v orthogonal so v so this symbol means it is all those vectors orthogonal to the vectors in v okay it's called orthogonal subspace right i had uh, defined this earlier okay this is a general property in fact you can explicitly construct matrices uh, which has this property uh, for a given subspace okay um the reason why i want this uh, i i wanted to um, talk about this is because uh, there is another way of uh, projection right so i, I had given a mathematical or a optimization characterization of uh, projection right i want that vector in the subspace which is close to the, the vector v right that is called projection right so for example um if i want to do this projection of okay so if i want to project u on to v on to a vector space v all that i have to do is i have to ensure that 
the distance is minimized okay so i want to take u and project it onto a subspace v that means i want to pick a vector v in v such that this distance is minimum right so what should i do infimum or all v in v right okay well uh, this infimum will give me the projection right in fact it will give me the projection length right so essentially if you have this and this is your v it gives me it gives me this length it doesn't give me what is the vector so of course i do arg this gives me a vector v star in v that is the projection of u onto v okay so is that fine we will see why this is the case later on it has got something to do with this with this vector also okay right this this matrix okay i can uh, write the solution as pv times u will give me v star so essentially i should be able to write this as pv v star sorry pv u so okay fine anyway keep this in mind okay so let's move on um few few uh, uh, things um so let's look at this let x be a r cross n cross n matrix matrix okay let uh, let norm of x be less than 1 this norm is basically uh, soup norm okay you know what soup norm is right you know what soup norm is it's uh, basically uh, what is it called huh soup norm is what what is soup norm what is soup norm it's ax so norm of ax or norm of x take maximization over all x right that gives me the soup norm okay uh, let's also add uh, and let me make it symmetric also for some reason okay um then what can you say about i minus x okay i'll leave it as a blank here okay let, let's see uh, what can you say about uh, uh, this unit matrix okay um <clears throat> uh, is it invertible i minus x is it invertible how do you verify that suppose the moment you see this right so what can you say about the matrix x is equal to x transpose symmetric the moment you see symmetric matrix what do you infer what do you infer ha huh? ha huh? louder eigen yeah it has eigen value decomposition right so the moment you have eigen value decomposition so now i want this i minus x i want to talk about the invertibility of this matrix so what is it that i have to answer suppose i say the eigen value of x is not 1 then definitely this is invertible right do you agree suppose okay so i let me write this suppose the eigen values of x is not equal to 1 then let's see what happens so i minus i can write it as u lambda u transpose so this i can write it as u i minus lambda u transpose because u u transpose is identity right so i can write this now what do you think is the inverse i take u i minus lambda u transpose uh what do you think is the inverse of this first i'll multiply by u transpose okay i'll do that to the other side maybe i'll use different color i'll multiply by u u transpose u will give me identity right i'll have i minus lambda i have to cancel that i have to do i minus lambda inverse when can i do i minus lambda inverse remember lambda is diagonal i is diagonal so the difference is diagonal so when can you invert a diagonal matrix when the diagonal entries are non zero right when will it be non zero if the eigen values of uh, this is not equal to 1 right then of course what is the eigen value of an identity matrix 
it has all the eigen values equal to 1 right so 1 minus something that's not equal to 1 will never be zero so it's invertible right that's why we need uh, this times u transpose what do you think is the answer this is identity right right similarly if i multiply so let me call this as x inverse okay it's a symmetric matrix right x inverse is also symmetric right so uh, i i could come up with inverse of x uh, when the eigen values of uh, x is not equal to 1 right let's see when does this happen okay so so when we need to check this right so we need to check this right let's see how to do check this okay okay so now uh, suppose let let suppose i say that the eigen value is 1 for this suppose suppose this is not true but suppose this is true right that means if i take norm on both sides it will be equal to v itself do you agree assume v is a unit vector um, so this implies norm of xv equal to norm of v so what can you say about uh, can you can you say something else for uh, uh, for this hmm? how do you prove that this has inverse what do you think is the answer hmm? Hmm? now i have to somehow prove that the eigen values are not equal to 1 so how do you prove that the eigen value is not equal to 1 huh any idea so this implies let's see 1 uh, equal to norm of x v divided by norm of v right do you agree is that fine okay now uh, 1 so if i instead of choosing any v i'll choose the v that maximizes this ratio right so that means i'm going to try to maximize the right hand side then it should be more than 1 1 should be less than or equal to right supremum over all v norm of xv over norm of v right but uh, what can you say about this this is what this is norm of x right so norm of x is definitely greater than 1 right uh, sorry uh, what did i assume yeah it's less than 1 right but it's less than one, right? Uh, so what is the contradiction now? So uh, we got we arrived with the contradiction, right? Do you agree with this? We started by saying, well, the eigenvalue is one, and then we went ahead, but it led to something like norm of x is less than one, but it's greater than or equal to one. That's what we have. But the assumption was it was less than one. Contradiction, right? This implies what? The max eigenvalue, the eigenvalue can never be equal to 1, right? Right? Okay, so this implies lambda i not equal to 1 for all i, right? So it doesn't matter which eigenvalue. Okay, okay so therefore uh, i minus x is invertible. Okay, so uh, before moving into one important thing called singular value decomposition, I want to do something um, uh, analogous to what you do in. Uh, in your uh, simple calculus suppose i have this okay this is what uh, one minus x the inverse that is one one over one minus x right um it has a taylor series expansion right so what is the expansion here can somebody tell me huh one minus x plus factorial plus minus This is your right do you agree now instead of one i'll write i instead of small x i'll write capital x this is a matrix now i take this matrix and invert it now the question is can i write this as identity minus x plus x squared by 2 factorial minus x cubed by 3 factorial plus and so on question what do you think is the answer 
Hmm? What do you think is the answer? Yes. What do you think is the answer? Yes. Huh? It should be true or not true? True, right? Why? Huh? Okay, so first of all, you should understand why this is true, right? Uh, what is it that you are uh, doing here? You are essentially saying, what is this, uh, this equal to means? It means, you look at, subtract the left hand side. What is the left hand side? Summation, k equal to 0 to n minus 1 power k, x power k over k factorial, right? This is a partial sum on the right hand. Do you agree with this? Right? You look at the absolute difference of this. This is the error if you use only n terms. Now you are saying limit n tending to infinity is zero. This is the meaning of this, right? It's basically a series and you know, uh, this is how you deal with series, right? That's why you start with limit and then uh, if you have a series, I can think of series as a sequence, right? And the limit of it, okay? Now, what does this mean here, right? So, this also means I have to look at i minus x whole inverse minus, this is the meaning, right? Minus 1 power k, x power k or k factorial. This is the difference. But can I take absolute value here? Hmm? Can I take absolute value or what should I take? Some type of norm, right? Which type of norm should I pick? Well, does it matter which norm I pick? Equivalence of norm, right? So you take any norm, your favorite, okay? So I'll call it as your favorite norm and limit n tending to infinity. This is, zero. This is the meaning of I minus X whole inverse in matrix, right? So this is how, uh, this is the actual meaning. Okay, it turns out that this is true. Okay, I can, uh, so go back to your calculus course. You look at how you wrote this. You do exactly same things. Replace small x by capital X, one by identity, and mod difference by norm difference. Everything will go through. Okay, can I uh, essentially write a book, right? If you have a book on series, you can essentially write a book on matrix series, whatever, okay? Okay, so clear. So remember this i minus x if norm of x is less than one, i minus x is invertible, and i minus x uh, whole inverse is given by this series. So, can I write log of one plus x? Well, uh, you know, uh, it uh, doesn't make sense here, but okay, let's look at another thing. Let a okay, let me directly write this. Uh, I'll write this as S plus plus N. Okay. What is the meaning of this? It's S for symmetric, plus plus for positive, definite, N for the dimension, right? Then I can take exponential of 80. What is this? Can somebody tell me? Huh? Can somebody tell me what is this? Um, how do you uh, write this? What is e power uh, ax? e power ax. How do you write this? 1 plus? Huh? How do you write this? 1 plus ax plus a square x square by 2 factorial plus a cube x cube by 3 factorial plus and so on. Right? So can I write this exactly like that? k equal to 0 to infinity. Uh, I'll write it like this. a power k over k factorial times t power k. So question. Well, uh, in fact, in this case, I can actually prove this. Okay, so uh, it turns out that I can I can actually uh, not prove. Okay, let, let's see what are the uh, things one can do. Okay, so now let's look at the left hand side. Okay, so let's see what uh, we can do here. a power k over k factorial t power well, uh, 
uh, I think uh, this T is a nonsense parameter. I'll I'll just knock it off. Okay, it will keep appearing everywhere. I mean, you can always uh, redefine A as T A. Right? Okay. So what is this? A is symmetric, right? So I can do eigenvalue decomposition. So what do I get? U lambda U transpose whole power k, power k factor. Now uh, you have this interesting quantity, right? U lambda U transpose whole power k. Uh, let's do. What do you mean by uh, whole squared instead of whole power k? So what is whole squared? U lambda U transpose. What will happen? This U transpose and this U transpose will cancel, right? What do you have? You have U lambda squared. See, lambda is diagonal. When you multiply lambda two times, you get lambda squared. U transpose. Clear? What happens if you take uh, a and multiply it by k? K times U lambda per k U transpose. Right? This is clear. So let's substitute it here, right? So uh, then the above sum becomes infinity u lambda per k over k factorial u transpose, right? Do you agree? I can write this as u. I can pull the u out of uh, the whole thing, right? It's independent of k equal to zero to infinity lambda per k over k factorial. Times u transpose. Okay, so what is this? This is u summation k equal to zero to infinity. What is lambda per k? Right, lambda two per k, lambda n per k, zero zero whole divided by k factorial u transpose. Right, this is how it looks like. Now uh, I can pull the summation inside. Sum of a matrix is nothing but sum of each individual terms, right? So I can do this. So this is U transpose matrix uh, um, essentially um, what is happening here is you know you have summation lambda one power k k factorial. What is that? Huh? Okay, I won't uh, write it here further. So we'll just figure that out here itself. So what is that? If I pull this summation inside, what will happen? Summation k equal to zero to infinity lambda one power k or k factor. What is that? E power lambda one, e power lambda two, e power lambda three. So you get e power, right? It's an exponential. So essentially. Um, what I can actually do is, you know, we started with this, right? So e power a, right? So essentially the meaning is it's u. We have a diagonal matrix with e power lambda one, e power lambda two, and so on, e power lambda n, u transpose. Okay, that's what the meaning is. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, one last thing um, before we sort of conclude any questions maybe i'll pass for a minute and then uh, any questions people use this extensively in i think probably in mechanical engineering and uh, control systems these kind of things right use u e power 80 do you agree so now can you tell me, for example, if I have e power minus a t, a belongs to s. What can you say about this as t goes to infinity? This is a matrix, right? e power minus a t is a matrix. So what happens to this as t goes to infinity? So you should apply this, no? You'll have, instead of lambda 1 power k, you have lambda 1 t whole power k, right? So the diagonal, what do you have? So, okay, so I think uh, you have minus, right? You'll have minus lambda one. It'll be e power minus lambda one power k, t power k. So what happens as t goes to infinity? Lambda one is positive, right? It's a positive definite matrix. So what happens to e power 
minus lambda 1 power k t power k as t goes to infinity goes to 0, right? So the entire diagonal matrix goes to 0. Therefore, the whole matrix goes to 0. Okay, so uh, this goes to 0 as t goes to infinity if this is true, right? These are some of the useful facts. Okay. Now, anyway, so uh, we have been looking at decompositions, right? So one was QR decomposition. The other one was eigenvalue decomposition. Of course, uh, you know, suppose I give you any matrix, okay? So let A be any matrix, okay? So for example, M cross N, M not necessarily equal to N. Then can you do some decompositions, which are, which is quite useful, right? That's a natural question to ask. Um, and that decomposition should be really nice, like U lambda, U transpose kind of a decomposition, right? It's not like uh, it should be a product of two matrices or three matrices. That you can always write, okay? Uh, product of some matrices. But uh, what I want is uh, decomposition that is useful and one of them should be some sort of a diagonal, right? That is the thing. Let's look at one uh, uh, simple example, okay? So let's... Uh, uh, let me start with an example here. Let you take a vector M rows one column. Okay. Can you do a decomposition for this? Huh? Okay. I'll write a decomposition. Okay. Um, you think about this. So what I'm going to do is the first column, so uh, I'm going to use x1, which is x divided by norm of x. All that I'm doing is normalizing, unit vector, okay? So the first column, I'm going to use uh, x1, okay? Now, I have x1 is a one-dimensional subspace. So there are n minus one dimensional orthogonal subspace of Rn, right? I can take the perpendicular vectors to x1. There are n minus one of them. So I'm going to stack all of them. Okay. So I can always find these two, these things. How do you find this, by the way? How do you find this? Hmm? How do you find this? Any idea? How do you find uh, such orthogonal? Suppose I give you a vector in Rn. Okay. Let's say R3. I give you a vector. I want you to find two other orthogonal vectors. What do you do? Huh? Of course, you randomly pick two vectors, right? In the orthogonal complement, right? You randomly pick. Now you apply gram schmidt You get all the three, right? Do you agree? Yeah. So now we have this. Now, uh, this is what? This is n cross n. Sorry, m cross m, right? This is an m cross m matrix. Now, I should get m cross 1, right? What should be this? Okay, here it is, right? 1, 0, 0, 0 times 1. Okay, I can do that. Is it fine? Why is that? If you multiply the first row by this, this gets selected, right? If I take the second row and multiply by this, this gets selected, right? And so on. So what gets selected? X1 gets selected. Is X1 equal to X? Huh? No, right? X1 is not equal to X. X1 times norm of, okay, I think this should be two now. Norm of X should be equal to X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this by two now. Now everything will fall through, will follow through, right? So X1 times, so it will select the first column of this matrix multiplied by norm of x, okay? So it turns out that this matrix, I'll call it as u, okay? This matrix, I'll call it as sigma, okay? And this is a number, but I'll call it as V transpose, or in, in general, I'll call it as V Hermitian, okay? Right? So, okay, I'm not going to prove this. So this is called the singular value decomposition. SVD for short. 
this is very very useful okay uh, this decomposition is very very useful in machine learning okay so what is this uh, singular value decomposition doing so given any matrix this is so powerful right a in let's look at complex m cross n then i can write a as u sigma v hermitian where u is basically m cross m u, and v is n cross n hermitian symmetric or unitary matrix okay or unitary matrices and sigma is like this so uh, sigma is not at square matrix right in general so it will be m cross n diagonal matrix with non negative entries um in the well i can uh, organize it in the decreasing order i'll say decreasing okay entries called there is a name for this okay uh this is not called eigen values these are called singular values okay right uh what are what are unitary matrices it's u u hermitian is u hermitian u is identity v v hermitian is v hermitian v is identity right of course uh, appropriate dimensions so this is called the singular value decomposition it's very very powerful right it doesn't make any assumption on what matrix you pick doesn't matter you give me any matrix i can do this eigen value decomposition okay let's look at some relationships so suppose i ask you to find i uh, you know svd in your exam right i give you 2 cross 2 or some 3 cross 2 matrix and i ask you to find the eigen value decomposition so what are the ways by which you can uh, do this let you i'll let's look at some of the properties okay so this is m cross n okay uh uh what can you say about uh, a a hermitian say about a a hermitian what can you say the moment you see a a hermitian that matrix the product uh what are the properties or what what, what is it that you can conclude from or say about this matrix what is the first thing that comes to your mind nothing when the class ends that's what what is the first thing that it comes to your mind it's a square matrix okay what else that's interesting right it's m cross n matrix a is m cross n but a hermitian is m cross m it's a square matrix okay what else second let me write this so square okay what else nothing ha huh? ha huh? so it's symmetric matrix yes right so it's called hermitian so okay so the moment you say hermitian symmetric what is the next implication eigen value decomposition right so i can write a hermitian as u lambda u transpose uh, u hermitian okay fine uh, these are the things that you observe right so let's see uh, what is the implication of svd on this so a i can write it as u sigma v hermitian right this is your eigen value decomposition remember this is m cross n how does it look like it looks like this for example sigma uh, if there are n n is smaller than m then you have all zeros here 
and then there is a zero here, right? This is m cross n. So the number of columns this way is m, which is larger than n. n has is large. Okay. All these singular values are non-negative, and it's in the decreasing order. Remember. Okay. So what can you say about a a Hermitian? A is u sigma v Hermitian. What is a Hermitian? A b whole Hermitian is b Hermitian a Hermitian, right? So v becomes v Hermitian becomes v. Sigma becomes sigma Hermitian. It doesn't matter. Sigma is you know all the real uh, entries. Okay, so that is something that I have to uh, say. Diagonal matrix with the ah, this is the problem. Okay, so I'll replace this. This is real. Okay, in fact, non-negative also. Um, yeah. So R plus is basically all the non-negative uh, numbers. Okay, so this is what you get. Right. So, what is the answer here? U v Hermitian v is identity. Sigma sigma Hermitian is what? You'll get a square matrix, right? Sigma is m cross n. Sigma Hermitian is n cross m. You get m cross m matrix. But what will be there in the diagonal? The diagonal will be sigma one squared, sigma two squared, and so on, right? So, this will be. I'll call this as. Sigma, sigma Hermitian as is, okay, times u Hermitian. Now, if you compare, for example, this with this, what can you say? So, u that you have here in singular value decomposition is the u that you have for the eigenvalue decomposition of a Hermitian, right? So what's there in the diagonal here? It's a diagonal matrix, right? Lambda m cross m. The diagonal entries are the eigenvalues. But what do you have here? They are all, it, it's like sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, sigma 3 squared, and so on. So the squared of the singular values will be the eigenvalues of A, a Hermitian. Okay. Squared of the singular values of A will be equal to the, the eigenvalues of A, a Hermitian. Okay. Now, how do you find U? One way is the following, right? You take A A Hermitian, do eigenvalue decomposition. The matrix U that you get is your U matrix of singular value decomposition. You get this. How do you get this? Any idea? V. What do you do? Huh? Huh? What do you do? Instead of A A Hermitian, you do A Hermitian here, right? So what is A Hermitian A Hermitian A? A is U Sigma V Hermitian. So I have to do Hermitian of that. A is U Sigma V Hermitian. So now this will be V Sigma Hermitian, U Hermitian, U Sigma V Hermitian. So this is nothing but V Sigma Hermitian Sigma V Hermitian. Okay. So you take A Hermitian A and do the eigenvalue decomposition. The eigenvectors that you get correspond to V matrix of your singular value decomposition. Sigma Hermitian Sigma is again, the diagonals will be Sigma 1 squared, Sigma 2 squared and so on. Some of them could be zero, okay, depending on, for example, if you are, uh, let me give you an example, okay. Uh, maybe I'll uh, write it like this. This could be Sigma, right? 3 cross 2. What is sigma sigma Hermitian? Sigma 1, sigma 2, 0, 0 times. So I have to convert this into right? 0, sigma 2, 0. Right? What is the product? This will be sigma 1 squared. This will be 0, 0. This will be 0, sigma 2 squared, 0. What will be the last row? This will be your sigma, sigma Hermitian. Or sigma transpose, right? What will be uh, sigma Hermitian sigma? If you go take it here and this here, you will get two cross two matrix, which is in either case the eigenvalues that you get will be the same, right? Sigma one squared, sigma two squared, and so on. The aesthetics will be different. You will have one zeros here. Okay, this is called the singular value decomposition. It's very very uh, important. So uh, let's look at one small aspect of uh, machine learning called uh, the principle 
component analysis. PCA. How many of you have heard of PCA? Huh? What do you do? Oh, everyone knows. So then, uh, can you tell me what is the procedure? What do you do? Okay, what is PCA? Hmm? Okay, dimensionality reduction. Why do you want to reduce dimensions? To reduce the computation. Okay, so what do you do there? Okay. Huh. Okay, so essentially this is how machine learning works, right? You have a problem and you want to classify, for example, spam versus non-spam. You take the input email, throw away unnecessary data, and then form a vector out of it, right? So we saw that in the first class. So how do you convert this, you know, uh, for example, your email into a vector? Um, if you are not good in, let's say, your uh, your domain knowledge about emails are not so good, what is it that you will do? You will add unnecessary things into your features, right? It will be like huge. So the dimensionality, that is the number of features that you take in a feature vector, could be very large. Let's say some one lakh or something like that. Let's say forty thousand or twenty thousand, something like that, right? Now uh, each vector that you have, for example, I collect the first data point, which is like this, right? The second data point is like this, and so on, right? So the third, last one would be this. So what is the dimension of this? So this is a data matrix. So n is the number of samples you have. For example, n is the number of emails that you have. Okay. And each email, I mean, the feature vector corresponding to it is of dimension d. So this is d rows in columns. d is the dimension. Okay. Um, and uh, d is very large why because you haven't done the feature engineering aspect very well i mean uh, you have hired a lousy uh, people who convert this matrix this uh, emails into uh, feature vectors they have done a very lousy job but fortunately they have added too many things not reduced right so this is the situation so now if you want to do machine learning on this um, you know, D is very large. You have to compute too many numbers. I mean, you have to do uh, number crunching, right? So what do you do? You have to somehow project it onto a smaller subspace. For example, if T is 30,000 dimensional uh, space, then let's say you bring it down to 5,000 or 4,000, right? So that is like huge. Now, when you bring it down, what is the, uh, what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to do? Huh? Capture the variation in the data, right? So, um, how do you do that? Any idea? Huh? Covariance matrix of the? Okay, and then? First thing is you have to adjust for the mean, right? For example, the data is somewhere there. Every, every All the data is like the length is 1 million and above, right? Then what do you do? You center it, you pull it back to zero, right? That's the first thing that you do. What is the next thing that you do? Assume that, you know, to begin with, you have already done that. So it's in, it's a zero mean. So what is covariance? Of course, this is not a probability theory class. So what is the covariance of uh, a vector x? You take x, x transpose, this will give me a matrix, look at the expected value, right? Assuming that the mean is 0, so this gives me covariance, right? So once you have the covariance matrix, what do you do? Hmm? So let's say you have the covariance matrix now. So somehow you computed the covariance matrix. Let me call this covariance matrix as A. 
okay so this is my or maybe i'll call it a c c is your covariance matrix so how do you find this covariance matrix using the data right so that's what you do so now once you have the covariance matrix what do you do so you want to maximize right what do you mean by maximizing maximize the spread or variance right that's what you wanted to do so how do you maximize the variance hmm what do you do but uh, that's not enough right so you have to take the data vector x you should not take x x transpose itself right you should take lower dimension and then look at the spread that's what you have to do right so how do you pull it to the lower dimension if you have x how do you get it to the lower dimension you multiply it by something right p of course you know where to project you can use the projection matrix itself directly but you don't know where to project or what to do with this so you look at px and then look at the covariance of this and try to uh, you know look at the spread and all that right so it turns out well we will look at this in greater detail uh, maybe in the next class as well as uh, when we look at optimization so essentially the idea is uh, you look at the covariance you look at the svd of uh, the data look at the singular values right if there are smaller singular values you zero out and reconstruct the matrix with only those so for example you have u sigma 1 sigma 2 and so on but i zero out all of them okay what we hermitian so what do you get when you take the product most of them are zero right you don't need to worry about those things so essentially you pick if you zero out uh, you will get a matrix which is like what when you multiply this this with this so the last few uh, column so when you do this right when you look at the columns here it, or rows here it will be zero right you have something here and then when you multiply it by u what you, what happens to this certain part of the rows of u will be retained right the others will be zero anyway right or the, sorry the columns right when you multiply this this gets multiplied with this so zero and so on so only a part of the u will get retained others will be zero so what do you do you can use that to sort of uh, you know reduce the dimension right so uh, you can throw away and construct a smaller matrix and that corresponds to your uh, principal component analysis anyway i i understand that you uh, may not have understood uh, this very clearly uh, we will look at in some detail in the next class and sort of conclude uh, uh, linear algebra and move on to optimization okay i'll stop here